Happy inset. Sadly, I can't be with you because I'm standardising in London. No doubt you're all missing me enormously. Uh, the whole point of this, uh, the video you're going to watch, is to and try and answer certain rhetorical questions suggested by Greg, the cameraman. Like, what is the point of learning support? What is the point of action plans? What do students get out of it? And we decided the best way of trying to get that across was to go to the students themselves and ask the consumer. So they're coming on now. Okay, before we begin the more formal part of the video, I'd like to thank my three victims very much for volunteering. They'll introduce themselves individually, but they have quite willingly and quite seriously thought it was important to come and talk to the staff about their learning support issues. Yeah, this is Scott McKenzie, and I've got dyspraxia. I first knew about my learning difficulty in primary school when I wrote back completely backwards mirror images, they've called it both words and letters. Um, they gave me a lot of help, introduced me to a lot of specialists who helped me get over my problems. And I'd, with help from both parents and teachers, I managed to get good such results. And then went to Evan Guest where I felt that I got over my problems and they didn't really need to help me. But in the end, I found that I needed the extra time anyway. So I was glad that I managed to get the, push the school to get that for me. And I managed to get enough results to get into Winstonley. And since I've been here, there's been a lot of help from all my tutors and from the learning support staff. My name is Leo Warren, and I went to Bursco High School, Bursco Priory High School. And there, they found that I was, they thought I was lazy because I was quite articulate in the way I spoke and I thought I was quite a, a bright person but my grades were really low you know? and they thought that uh, that was just me being lazy but actually I just couldn't I couldn't do some of the lessons the way that it was taught some of them were just blocks of notes that you were given and you had to learn those and I couldn't do it and then there were some lessons like science where you were given information that you had to apply to you know a, a situation or like a doing experiments and you got to use all the equipment and I learned from that and that's why my grades ranged from an A to an E you know, A's to E's, so that's, you know, so luckily I got in, and since I've been in, I've been here, I've been finding it really, really easy, you know, compared to high school. Hi, I'm Brett Walker, and I've got dyslexia. Uh, before I came here, I had, I, my writing was quite painfully, painfully slow, but it was never picked up, picked up on me, because my teachers always said that I was, you know, I was a very bright boy, I was, I, I, I knew my stuff. Like, I, like, in lesson, like, if they asked me a question, I always knew the answer. I was very good verbally. It was when it came to like, actually writing the stuff down, it was, it was appalling. Like, I, like, I couldn't, like, every, everyone was given, like, half an hour to do, like, and, like, two exam questions. I was still only halfway through the first one, and everyone else had finished ten minutes before, and, and, you know, it was, like it, it is it was very demoralising, but people but no one ever like and it always came up in reports about Brett is a very bright boy, but if he wants to succeed in his exams, he needs to knuckle down and write faster. With the learning support I found that it's been really useful because I was diagnosed as being a dyslexic and then it's diagnosed, but I was dyslexic and I found that when they told me that it was kind of it was good because I knew why I'd have these certain problems. Like the teachers, they honestly thought I was a very bright guy. I just wasn't paying attention and I wasn't writing like fast enough. And I, uh, it, like it was always in my head in it sounded like, oh, if I had ten more minutes, I could have finished that question or something. So, are you saying basically just to recap that Bursco never picked up on this at all? They never sent you to anyone. Right, well, they they didn't send me to anyone to get. It have tests but they just and my handwriting was bad and my spelling was bad so I went to a uh, you know, learning support but it was just kind of you did do some handwriting sheets you know it was where the kind of lazy bad people went really you know, it wasn't it wasn't <laughs> they, said, 
it wasn't much help at all, you know, so I just used to, I used to hate that. I was talking to Scott that you saw earlier and he was, men he was mentioning like all these problems that he had at high school and it was, it, I was, it was ticking off in my head, yeah, I, c I could never write fast, yeah, I found, I found booklets that was just plain writing absolutely horrible to learn. So I went to my personal tutor and I said, like, look, I've got, I recognise these problems in myself. And like, she just, she sent me off to the educational psychologist and, you know, he, he came back with a report that said, yes, you are a very, you are a very intelligent guy. It's just, you, there's something wrong with you. There's like, there's something, the matter where you just can't write fast enough to keep up with yourself. Did you not? Just want to give up altogether? Did you not get totally demoralised? Well, I, I did, and I had you know one of the lowest uh, you know attendance records in the school. Really? Yeah. And uh, I you know I got letters, uh, one letter home one year saying you need to turn up more, and then I could, you know I just, just just couldn't do it. And then in the final you know few months, I thought well you know I want to get want to get into Win Stanley because I like that I like it there when I went to open evenings. So I put in some work and revised, and I you know. Got five A's and some B's and got in. So. I, I, I were Burst go shocked by your results? Did you ever get any feedback uh, on that? They they, they thought I was. Uh, they, they, they they said you'll be you'll be pleasantly surprised, and one of my teachers said she was you know she said it was a, a miracle. <laughs> so you know, and they, they they thought I was just you know arrogant and lazy and you know, but I I put in the work and the might to get in here, and since I'm in here, it's been really helpful. Right, Especially right. with any support where you can talk to the teachers, because right. I find that that's the main thing really, just to tell them what your, your needs are. I did my general schools exam for English, and I came out with this like top end uh, A, where I only came out with two C's for English at CSC, because just because I've had like 25% extra time, it makes all that difference, and I've bumped up my grade like two, like by two letters, which is you know. Please, my mother, no end. Like, she was like, oh, yeah, that's brilliant. Yeah, brilliant. In my lessons, I feel that they're very active, which gives me a chance to get involved, which is the way I find I learn best. Can you just tell us what you mean by active, Scott? Just give us an example. Um, like, discussions and PowerPoint, which is something that you can see and see stuff coming together. Whereas I don't like where you get dictated to or get a big block of notes because to me it, it's just words on a page. I can't really turn that into anything. So um, would that go for people making lots of notes on the board? Would that be a real problem? Yeah, if someone writes for a long time on a board, I feel I, I begin to switch off and I probably remember the first couple of lines and then after that it just goes, I can't sink in a lot of written information at once. Right, and does that also double up with the fact that your, your handwriting might be a bit slower? Yeah, I'm a, I write big to get over the problems that I had, and so it seems to slow me down, which, when it, it is dictated, I can't keep up with the pace of the rest of the class, so I'm having to continually ask for like lines or bits of conversation to be repeated. And does that make you feel a bit humbled or do you feel daft? Yeah, I feel that everyone else is waiting for me and I feel that everyone's like looking at me, waiting for me to finish. What's embarrassing for me is that I just completely forget like the simplest of words. And really, can you I, give us an example? I, uh, I, all the way through primary school, I could never spell that, as in T H A T. Right. I was always having to put my hand up and saying, "How do you spell that?" Right. And they were thinking, "What? You don't know how to spell it? No. How do you spell the word that?" <laughs> and like, it's I don't know. I've, I've managed to like actually spell it now, but like from year three to year five, I just couldn't spell that word, and it never. I could never comprehend why, and so I came here and I was told, oh, you're dyslexic, that's why you can't do some of this thing, some of these things. So if you get one of these awful words that cause you problems yeah. and the staff's dictating notes, yeah. you'll be fussing over that one word and lose yeah. all the notes. So I, I, actually, I actually have to go back and say, could you spell that word for me, please? What is a really bad lesson? What is a lesson where you sort of lose the will to live? Uh, a lesson where we'll come in and... Uh, will be given some notes and the teacher will uh, 
you know, stand stand there and say, read through this for twenty minutes, and I won't and I won't be able to do that. I'll just you know. Can you explain why that is then? Well, I just I'm I'll, I'll I'll read the first page of the notes and I'll be able to concentrate for the first kind of paragraph, and then my eyes will continue to move down the page and look at the words, but none of the information goes into my head. I'll just be thinking about something completely different. And then I get to the end of the page and realise that I haven't learned anything. I've just, you know, spent my time reading it, but I haven't actually got the inform information I've actually got into my head and I haven't learned Does it. Does that happen when you say read a novel or an article? Yeah. I, mean, I find that unless I'm 100% concentrated on that, doing doing that, I won't be able to uh, to do that. So if people are, have to read it. So if people are talking, I find it really, really difficult to read. So what works really well? You said the PowerPoint. And conversation. And I, I enjoy, like, when we get a, sub, a heading and we're then told to discuss it, I enjoy that because I've got free reign then to develop what I want to say. Right, and also you can absorb it while you're talking about it. Yeah. The pace is the right pace yeah. for you. Uh, what about the size of notes and text and printed sheets? If I get lots of very small fonted text, I really, if I'm honest, I don't read it. I just put it to one side. You just don't even it. read it? No, because I can't take it in. So would it be best if staff tried to give you that the night before to do? And then the lesson starts almost like class preparation, uh, homework preparation? Yeah, I mean, that, 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 that would be a, you know, helpful. But uh, I don't think even when it's in text, it would take me a long time to kind of have to break it down and learn section, sections and then apply some things I've learned in, say, support to that. And I wouldn't have time to do that. And I wouldn't want to do that, really. Right. So, what works well for you then is if, it's like with Scott, if, if staff give you sort of quite colourful, stimulating sheets with large font and, and mm. varied points yeah. Yeah. And, and the use of bold and that. Yeah. And, and, yeah, and even if some teachers don't have time to do that or they don't feel like they can do that, even if they could just you know, do more application of what we've been learning. I suppose it's difficult in some subjects, but if it's possible to apply what we're, what we're looking through, so to read a page and then the class t talk over what they've just done and the teacher explain it and then we all talk over it and then I can learn it. But if we're just told to read something and, and learn it, I can't, you know. I just, can't, just can't, just get on with it sort of thing. Yeah. yeah. Is there anything that works well for you that you could pass on to the staff when you come to revision? Key points, definitions and key points such as for law, for example, cases, I'll write them down and then I'll like, read one and then I'll remember, I'll like, well, try to remember if I, I have what the key points are and then once I've got them right, I'll move on to the next one. Do you ever use pictures at all? With, like the law cases, obviously, with cheese, man, you could have a piece of cheese in your mind or does that not work? I'm not very good at it, so that kind of puts me off doing things like that. I prefer, like, using the odd keyword. Right, right. So you but I don't use it. lots of text because then I put myself off really. If like there's a, if there's just like a hint of colour on the on the page, it just seems to like set something off and I can learn it a lot better right, than if it's right. just like but plain even, text. Even if we don't provide you with the colour, if when we do an activity you use a coloured pen with the text, you know like the way we write in cases. Yeah. That, that helps Yeah, if I can it? get a highlighter and I just like make the occasional little stripe on the work, like it, it helps me no end. Like and I like I really do like I really do like, it really does set me off. It really does like make my brain come alive and actually I learn the stuff. Like uh Leo was talking earlier about how he can't read uh, a newspaper article or something like that. I'm the same. I can't read something like just simply read it and sort the information up. I have to actually make mental notes to myself like, oh yeah, you got to remember Cheeseman did this, Cheeseman got... Yeah, we won't like, go on too much Yeah, we that. won't go on to that, that's a bit, that's, that's a bit, uh, that's not... Racy. That's, not, that's a bit too racy for the cameras, yeah. <laughs> we won't want one of the oldest teachers to have a comment, do we? <laughs> that's fine. Can you tell us then what, what it's been like with the action plan and has that been useful? Have staff helped? Have you noticed any staff changing the way they teach and you think they are trying to cater for your needs? I think this year, over the year, over this year, I think it's changed as staff have become more aware of everyone's different difficulties. And the action plans, are, I feel, are a good idea, but there's certain 
staff who just have you do the action plan and then don't kind of do anything about it once you've got what your difficulties are. Whereas other staff will keep maintaining what you've put down and actually give you good suggestions on how to improve those techniques. Right, so the, the provision is mixed, but the staff that are supportive of action plans, you feel that they actually are very, very useful? Yeah, Yeah. because if someone keeps checking up on something that's problem, it makes you want to improve it, whereas if you just left to it yourself, you don't really know where to begin in improving your difficulties. Right, okay. And the learning support staff themselves, you think they've done a good job then? Yeah. There's been the allocation that there's not been much for me to do because I've not had many problems because, like I said, I've had a lot of help by my tutors overall. But in the lessons, when the learning support lessons, when I've needed help, I've found that it's there and easy to get. All you'd have to do is ask. Tell us about the experience of actual action planning then. Just talk well, us through action that. planning, the actual... Because you bully me on this. <laughs> the actual action plans themselves, you know, writing down what you what you need, I haven't really found that, that helpful because the teachers don't tend to follow up, like Scott said, they don't really follow up uh, what, you, what you said on that. But the best thing really is just sitting down one to one with the teacher and telling them what, what you need. And although you haven't really followed the steps that you did in the action plan, you can say, oh, I'm having problems with this, so could you do some voiceovers on the PowerPoint presentations? Or a tutorial. Or a tutor yeah, or, you know. How do other students feel about this? Do they feel as though you're a bit privileged? Because I usually find when you tell me you want something done, you're actually speaking for the whole group. Yeah, I mean, I, I, that's what I find. I mean, I find that people are, are glad when, when, when I said this. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> we're just a duff teacher. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> because they, they, you know, they, they can learn it anyway, even without these tutorials and extra, you know, these voiceovers, but it, it makes it so much easier for them. You know, and they, they can learn it much better and much easier and they have a, a full understanding of the subject instead of just taking in the information and spitting out an exam because you know, that's not education. How have you found the action plans then? Uh, they, like, they are useful and like I, I can see the points of some of the suggestions that are made but sometimes they, they make a suggestion and it just doesn't work and you don't want to you don't want to come back two weeks later and say oh you're wrong it doesn't work because um, like, I feel like I'd be offending the teacher if I said that doesn't work for me. Uh, I mean, it's interesting that because I don't think people would be offended. It would be good for someone to give feedback saying, you know, in my circumstances this doesn't work. Okay, the learning support system itself then. The uh, quick scan, the staff. Oh, yeah, the quick scan. I find that I think a really good thing is for people to be told before they do the quick scan <coughs> what the you know, benefits of being dyslexic are, because most people I've spoken to lied on their uh, quick scan tests. Really? But, yeah, they said, uh, well, I'm not going to write down that I have problems, but I can't read properly, because I'll, they'll look like an idiot. Sick. Yeah, and, uh, and then um, when I tell them that I get, in my university, I always boast about how I get X amount of money for computer equipment and X amount of money for teachers helping me in university. And they go, oh, God, I shouldn't have lied on my... Mm. Quick scan, yeah. quick scan thing. Yeah. Yeah. So you know, I think that should be told to all these students, and then they'll, you know, there'll be probably be a lot more dyslexic people. That that. <laughs> you don't think it'll go the other way where people might pretend to have well, these problems, or you don't think quick quick scan would allow that to happen? I think you can easily pretend. I think on quick scan, but uh, I think with the educational psychologist, when you pay the the two hundred pounds which the college has to pay for, he can probably uh, you know, differentiate between somebody who's making it up and somebody who is dyslexic. Right. Because the main thing I I, I what I've I don't really know this from any kind of source, but I've realised, I think it's if you have a, dif a difference between your IQ and then your worst point in your learning. So if you have really bad spelling and handwriting, and yet your IQ says that you shouldn't have those problems, right. and therefore you're dyslexic. La last question then, obviously exams coming up soon, and revision. What sort of the best sort of revision techniques for somebody uh, with a learning support issue? What do you think works? Well, for me, it's uh, I just get my notes out and I'll read them and I'll get a pencil out or I'll get a coloured a, like a coloured pen out and I'll I'll, I'll I'll like underline things. I'll make notes in the margin and that seems to help me because it it seems to help me remember things. So, with me, all you have to do is just give me a plain set of notes and I'll. I'll go off and I'll do what I need with it. But and you do prefer the bigger fonts. Yeah, it. I'm not. I'm not too mild about how if like if the font's small, just 
not that it's like like you need a mic, you need like a magnifying glass to read it. I'm okay with that. Mm. It's just. But you like I, it broken yeah. up into headings yeah. and yeah. boxes. If it's and if things. it's got yeah, if it's like structured nicely so that it's not just one big column of text. It's like little. It's like like several columns of text that helps a lot. Mm. And like it helps if like if you ha if there's like a little bit of variety at times like you have like your plain sheets of paper with your blocks of text and then you have like something different that like covers all size. of it like a mind map right like that can like it can just like cement the knowledge into my brain sometimes mm. not all the time but some of the time so it it just depends it depends on like. I don't know, for some reason, I'm not very consistent in how I learn. I seem to learn. <laughs> I see I, sometimes a mind map can work for one topic, but it doesn't work for the other. So it's just trying to find the, the, the right technique that will that, make me learn that topic the best. Uh, well, here I am again, folks, but they do say it's never all over till the fat lady sings, so blah, 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 blah. Uh, my second task was uh, from Fran was to say what I, as a subject teacher, got out of making the video and also generally out of learning support. The video itself, obviously, they are, in technical terms, my boys. So the first experience I got when we were making it was an awful lot of empathy with them for the difficulties they experience. And, and one in particular, I know how hard he tries and how desperate he is to do well. And, and it is a phenomenal uphill struggle for him. The other thing I probably got out of making the video was still a sense of guilt, but as people who know me well know, I do guilt very well. Uh, I still don't feel I do anywhere near enough, although I am making progress. So moving on generally to learning support, over the last two years I have tried to change and, and I would like to ask forgiveness for students uh, who suffered me in the past when I didn't realise how difficult it must be uh, for them to study politics in my traditional way. What I've done, I've obviously uh, returned and rewritten resources, I've addressed very basic issues like the size of font, the use of clip art, um, the, the breaking up of the text. I've tried, to, I've tried to make my written resources a lot more digestible, bite-sized chunks rather than huge text. The other thing I've done, and it's worked really well, is I've become far more conscious of the need for visual imagery apart from my own good looks. Uh, obviously this goes hand in hand with my IT skills now in PowerPoint, which everybody's bored to death with, but I do use far more colourful acetates as well as PowerPoint, as well as coloured pens on the board underlining key terms where people say that really helps them. Again, with some students, one you didn't meet today, he finds it difficult to get through a lesson unless I keep summarising the main points. And so I try to build that in, not just as a conclusion, but as a fairly regular habit. Um, action planning. Yes, it works for me as well as them because they tend to be the unofficial spokesman or spokesperson of the whole group. Setting of tasks in lessons, I know particularly with Brett who you met earlier, he can't work to speed and so if I put a task in, that will stress him out. So what I do is I work around that and maybe set the task as class preparation. I could go on forever, I would go on forever, but bye for now. Uh, well, basically, I was first diagnosed dyslexic at university. It was in the first year. Uh, we're at the psychology department. We're asking for volunteers uh, for so, some of the psychometric tests, but they said no dyslexics. Well, not knowing I was dyslexic, I went and had the tests. Uh, the results came back and said, we're not paying you because you're obviously dyslexic. Uh, this came as a great surprise to me, not sort of like knowing that I was dyslexic at all. Uh, but they were very interested that I'd got all the way through to the end of the first year degree level not even been spotted at school. Uh, so I was asked back to do some more and more tests and then found out I was graded at that, at that stage there were five levels of dyslexia and I was graded at three. I can spell the most complicated words, but I can't. I can't spell like a, sing, a simple five-letter word. I didn't realise people 
found learning as easy as they do. To me, it was, it was an absolute nightmare. They thought I was lazy. Looking back at school, a lot of things made sense then about why I was considered to be lazy at English. Uh, couldn't do my work. And a lot of people sort of like said that I was a lot brighter than I came across. If there's just like a hint of colour on the, on the page, it just seems to like set something up and I can learn it a lot better. Reading again was a major problem. I could never understand why people were living in horses. So then obviously I had to sort of like realise that was the word was house. I think everybody should have somebody like Alice and Craig who they can talk to if they're having a problem. The, the interesting bit is though going back and reading some of the reports, you know, sort of like saying stupid, lazy, etc. But dyslexia didn't exist in them days. Daft. Yeah, but I feel that everyone else is waiting for me and I feel that everyone's like looking at me, waiting for me to finish.